The United States financial authorities have taken control of California's troubled First Republic Bank. It will be acquired by J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. The government regulators announced that to protect the depositors, the FDIC is entering into a purchase and assumption agreement with J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. California's Department of Financial Protection and Innovation said that J.P. Morgan will assume majority of deposits, include, including the assets First Republic Bank had failed to come up with a workable rescue plan last week. It had disclosed a loss of more than $100 billion in deposit in the first quarter. Sudanese people along with other demonstrators took to roads in Washington protesting against the ongoing deadly conflict in Sudan which has been going on for more than two weeks now. The demonstrators demanded US interference to stop the conflict while two warring Sudanese forces announced the extension of an existing ceasefire for further 72 hours. The latest of multiple truces that have largely been violated by both sides. According to reports, so far more than 75,000 people have been internally displaced in the heavily conflicted nation. The war between Ukraine and Russia is intensifying. In the latest, Ukraine's military says it has destroyed 15 of the 18 missiles launched by Russia in the wee hours of Monday morning. Air defense systems were called into action to shield the Kiev region. Most of the missiles directed towards the capital were repelled. However, a Russian strike killed one and wounded three others in Kherson. Blasts were also reported in Dnipro and Sumy regions. The eastern Ukraine city of Pavlorad was struck twice overnight. Several buildings were destroyed due to these strikes. With these latest developments, it appears that the capital city of Kiev has bolstered its radar systems and can effectively block Russian strikes now. Sweden's largest military drills in 30 years, the Aurora 2023, were in full swing across large parts of the country amid the backdrop of its efforts to join NATO. The exercise showcasing the full range of Sweden's defence resources and capabilities to operate in joint missions with other NATO allies. Hopes to illustrate a point that the government has been making for months that Sweden will bring security to NATO, not just be a beneficiary. Over the weekend, Swedish military displayed country's US-manufactured Patriot medium-range air defense system. Indonesia's workers marked International Labor Day by conducting major rallies across Southeast Asia's largest economy. According to Confederation of Indonesian Trade Unions, with representatives 32 labor unions, 50,000 workers are to participate in the traditional May Day marches in Jakarta. Thousands gathered near the National Monument, waving colorful flags of labor groups and venting their anger at the new job creation law. The participants later marched to the Constitutional Court and a heavily guarded presidential palace to demand the repeal of the legislation. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida addressed a session of the Arab League during a visit to Cairo. He spoke about the Russian invasion of Ukraine. He said that the international order was being shaken from the ground up. Kishida also announced that a third session of the Japan-Arab political dialogue would be held in September. The Japanese Prime Minister is on a visit to Africa with Egypt, the first stop on his tour, which is set to include trips to Ghana, Kenya and Mozambique. Thailand's leading prime ministerial candidate Shinawatra has been 
has given birth to a baby boy just two weeks before election. Srinivasra hopes to return the populist movement her father and aunt led before getting ousted by army coups. The 36-year-old politician announced the birth on her baby boy through her official faith Facebook and Instagram accounts. She even shared a photo with her newborn. Srinivatra has been first or second in polls for voters' favourite prime ministerial candidate throughout the campaign for the May 14th election. Dozens of domestic flights at the Manila International Airport Terminal 3 were cancelled on Labor Day long weekend following a power outage. At least 40 flights were cancelled as of Monday morning and more are expected to be delayed. Philippines President Ferdinand Marcus Jr. has commissioned the Department of Transportation to take the necessary steps to restore the power operations to normal. Alibaba's founder Jack Ma has taken up visiting profes professorship with a Tokyo University. Tokyo College, a new organization run by University of Tokyo, has invited the business tycoon to deliver lectures on management and business startups. Jack Ma has been taken up on a renewable contract as his present contract ends in October. Ma will be engaging in areas including advising on important research themes and management lectures. After spending more than one year overseas, Jack Ma returned to China in March. Indian Air Force Chief Air Chief Marshal VR Chaudhary PVSM has arrived in Sri Lanka for a four-day visit. The Indian Air Force Chief has been invited by his Sri Lankan counterpart. The visit symbolizes strong relations and close cooperation between the two friendly neighbors. Sri Lanka has been accorded the status of priority one partner by India in case of any operation scenario. Air Chief Marshal Chaudhary would be laying foundation stone for India-Sri Lanka Friendship Auditorium at Sri Lanka Air Force Academy. He would further present and 32 propellers to Sri Lanka to ensure high operational readiness of aircraft held by Sri Lankan Air Force. India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval is in Tehran for one day visit. He met his counterpart, Rear Admiral Ali Shak Shamkhani, Secretary of Iran's Supreme National Security Council. According to reports, NSA Doval will be meeting with other senior Iranian officials to discuss regional and international issues of mutual interest. This will be the maiden high level visit from India to Iran since. Tehran and Riyadh promises to stabilize the larger West Asian region and boost economies. Now, in a big step, Indian government has blocked 14 messenger mobile applications which were used by terror groups in Union territories of Jammu and Kashmir. This is done on the recommendation of Defence Forces, Security, Intelligence and Investigative Agencies. Multiple investigations reveal that the apps were being used by terrorists to communicate with their supporters and on-ground workers. The government found that these applications did not have representatives in India and they could not be contacted for seeking information as mandated by the Indian laws. While the International Labour Day is being celebrated in various parts of the globe, Turkey's police has detained protesters attempting to hold Labour Day demonstrations in Istanbul. The city centre's famous Taksim Square has been closed off. The city is further expecting a mass international workers' rally ahead of the key May 14th elections, billed as a referendum on President Erdogan's two decades in power. A long-imprisoned Yemeni general who was captured by the Iran-backed Houthis eight years ago has been released. 
General Faisal Rajab has been released following talks between Houthi representatives and members of Yemeni tribes. Exchanges of hundreds of prisoners linked to Yemen's long-running war took place earlier this month following a United Nations broker deal. In yet another conflict in the West Bank, the Palestinian Health Ministry has reported that the Israeli police have killed a teen in a fresh raid in the West Bank. While the Israeli army says that the soldiers fired at armed suspects, the healthy, pardon me, the Health Ministry further added that the 17-year-old youth was shot in the head in a refugee camp. No soldiers were wounded in the incursion, while three people were detained by Israeli forces. The latest killing brings the number of Palestinians killed in Israeli-Palestinian conflict to 101. According to reports, 19 Israelis, one Ukrainian and one Italian have also been killed in the same period during various conflicts. The month of May has begun and citizens of New Delhi are yet to feel the May heat as early showers and cold weather welcome the month of May. According to India's Meteorological Department, the temperature went down by 10 degrees and thunderstorms are expected to hit various parts of the capital. Just few days back, Maharashtra welcomed early showers while Madhya Pradesh witnessed hailstorms. Celebratory mood grips London as it prepares for King Charles III coronation, which is to happen this weekend. Towns, cities and villages across the UK are expected to be awash with Union flags and patriotic decorations. Apart from delightful representations, the shadows of monarchy's imperialistic past also looms over the impending ceremony. With the UK economy on the precipice of recession, some are even questioning the cost of the ceremony. Debates on the relevance of monarchy in the Gen Z era have also been actively making rounds. The festival of Trisur Puram concluded on Sunday in India's Kerala state. It is an annual Hindu festival known for its elephant parade. Priests performed rituals while being mounted on elephants lavishly decorated with golden ornaments. The elephants were seen carrying cutouts of Hindu gods and goddesses on their heads. Trisur Puram is celebrated generally in the months of April or May. When the moon rises with the Puram star in the Malayalam calendar, it is believed to have been started by King Sakthan of the 18th century Kochi Kingdom.